It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Yellow Talon Murder Case. Today, many thousands of people are thankful to their physicians or dentists for first having introduced them to that remarkable preparation called anison, which brings such incredibly fast and effective relief from the pains of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. So ask for easy-to-take anison tablets at your drug counter next time you suffer pains from headache neuritis, or neuralgia. For most effective relief, use on is directed. I'll repeat the name for you. Anacin. A-N-A-C-I-N. Now for Mr. Keene and the Yellow Talon murder case. Our scene opens in the study of a country home on the Hudson River, some 50 miles from New York. An attractive, auburn-haired young woman has just entered the room. And as she shakily picks up the telephone and dials a number, it is obvious that she is under some frightful strain. Why don't they answer? Why don't they answer? Operator. Oh, operator. I've been trying to get the police. It, it's a matter of life and death. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, hello? 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 Oh, the phone. The line's been cut. The phone's dead. No. No. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Can I help you, young fella? Are you Mr. Keene? Oh, I'm Mike Clancy, his partner. Mr. Keene's in his private office. Uh, did you and this young lady have uh, an appointment with him? No, I, I just hoped I'd get a chance to see him right away. It's rather important. Please, tell him Philip Carter's here. It's terribly urgent. Oh, here's the boss now. Mike, uh, do you have the Roberts folder? Are you Mr. Keene, sir? Yes. My name is Philip Carter, and this is my fiancée, Eloise Gray. Could you possibly give us a few minutes of your time, sir? I'd be very grateful. Just what is it you want to see me about, Philip? A murder, Mr. Keene. It's Philip's sister, Helen. She was... She was killed last night in Philip's home. Saints preserve us, but we didn't read anything about it in the papers, young fella. The family estate is 50 miles from here, on the Hudson. It will probably be reported in the newspapers later today. Well, sit down, Philip. And you, Miss Gray. Mike, we can let the Roberts matter drop for a while doesn't seem to be as urgent as this. Okay, Mr. Keene. Now, suppose you give me the details, Philip. My sister, Helen, was found in the study about midnight by our Uncle Jonathan. He's been living with us ever since the death of our parents years ago. I'll never forget last night as long as I live, Mr. Keene. I saw Helen's body, too. You were in the house at the time of the crime, Heloise? I was asleep. Philip's uncle woke me up and sent me into town for the police. The phone wires had been cut. How was Helen Carter killed? That was the most horrible thing of all, Mr. Keene. My sister had been strangled, and her throat was terribly lacerated. It was as if some gigantic bird with sharp talons or claws had attacked her. A bird? Saints preserve us. What made you think of a bird, Philip? Because of this. It was found near my sister's body. 
The police permitted me to bring it here when I told them I was going to ask you to enter the case, Mr. Keene. Well, let me see that, Philip. Hmm. Mike, what do you make of this? Well, it looks like a, a talon, Mr. Keene. A yellow claw. Yes, the type of claw an eagle or a hawk might have. And yet this particular talon is too big for an ordinary hawk. If it actually came from a bird, the bird must have been gigantic. Sure, and it makes your spine crawl just to look at it, boss. It's as sharp as a razor. Mm. What other facts are there to the case, Philip? Well, according to Uncle Jonathan, he was awakened around midnight by some kind of horrible scream. At first he thought it was one of his pets, but later he changed his mind. What kind of pets does your uncle keep? Falcons. In medieval times, as you probably know, Mr. Keene, hunters would train falcons to help them bag their game. Well, I've never even seen one of them things. Well, a falcon is a hawk, Mike, and a very clever and ferocious bird. Hundreds of years ago, they were trained to go after small game. They can be quite wild and dangerous. Uncle Jonathan Briggs is an eccentric, I guess. He's been a little peculiar ever since he lost his fortune years ago and came to live with us. We've been supporting him. But it hasn't been difficult. Dad left a very considerable estate when he died. And your Uncle Jonathan and your fiancée, Miss Eloise, were the only people in the house at the time of your sister's murder? Yes, Mr. Keene. My sister Helen had a personal maid, Amy Parrish, but she had taken the evening off and she didn't return until very late. Philip, I, I, I think you also ought to tell Mr. Keene about Kim Bradhurst. And who is Kim Bradhurst? A neighbor. He was in love with my sister. and He used to make a pest of himself. I once had to throw him out of the house bodily because he annoyed her so. Was he questioned by the police? Yes, Mr. Keene, but he had an alibi. He was ill all day yesterday and in bed. He had a doctor visit him about nine last night. Mr. Keene, Philip's sister Helen was one of my best friends and a wonderful girl. I never thought she made an enemy in her life until now. We were very close, Helen and I. And if I ever get my hands on the killer... Philip, please. Don't talk like that. You frighten me. Let Mr. Keene and the police handle the case. There's been enough horror already. Your fiancé is right, Philip. No matter how you feel, the law must take its course. I understand that, sir. Will you come back to the house with us, Mr. Keene? Philip was afraid to leave me there alone after what happened. That's why I came with him to New York. Eloise was spending a few days with Helen while I attended a horse show near here. I've shown a few entries every year, but I only wish I'd never even thought of it this time. Maybe if I'd been at home last night, I'd have been able to save my sister's life. It was something you certainly couldn't foresee, Philip. Mike, suppose we drive out to the Carter estate, along with Philip and Eloise. I'll get the car, Mr. Keene. We're having my sister's funeral at two o'clock this afternoon. I guess we'll just have time to make it. Then suppose Mike and I go to your house, Philip. You and Miss Eloise can attend the funeral... While we make a preliminary investigation. Whatever you say, Mr. Keene. This yellow talon is most strange, to say the least. Certainly it couldn't have been some monstrous bird it's and... It's dreadful. It makes me shudder just to look at it. When I think of poor Helen, I... I know, it's... It's shocking. But I promise you, Philip, I'll see this case through to the end. No matter how great the risk. That must be the Carter house, Mr. Keene, right in front of us. Yes, and apparently that's where the road ends, Mike. Oh, saints preserve us. What's the trouble? Did you see that, boss? What? Well, something flew by the car on the left just a second ago. Mr. Keene, look out. It's some kind of a hawk. Yes, Mike, it's, it's a falcon. One of Uncle Jonathan's, I imagine. Why, well, it's... Flying back to the house. Try to see where it lands, Mike. There. There she goes. Up behind them gables on the roof. And she's a beauty, isn't she? Mr. Keene, who's that fellow? Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. By any chance, are you Philip Carter's uncle? Why, yes, I'm Jonathan Briggs. Who may you be? My name is Keene. This is my partner, Mike Clancy. Keene, the eminent investigator. You've come to look into the death of my niece, Helen. At your nephew, Philip's request. I imagined you'd be at your niece's funeral, Mr. Briggs. I don't like funerals, Mr. Keene. I never attend them. Well, 
Would you mind showing us to the house? Not at all. But let me tell you that you're just wasting your time here. Am I? As well as risking your life. The house is no good. It's cursed with bad luck. Well, we'll risk it, Mr. Briggs. Suit yourself. But just remember that I warned you. This way, Mr. Keene. Amy! Amy, where are you? Fool maid's never around when you want her. Make yourself at home, Mr. Keene and Mr. Clancy. Well, thank you, Mr. Briggs. It certainly is a big house. Must be 20 or 30 rooms in this place. Yes, it's big. Big and cold. You don't seem to like it very much, Mr. Briggs. I don't. And why do you stay? Because I can't go anywhere else. Besides, Sir Richard and Lady Sharp would miss the woods. And who are Sir Richard and Lady Sharp? My birds, my falcons. You saw Sir Richard a moment ago when he flew past your car. He's as fast as lightning, that one is. I've spent three years training him how to kill. Huh. Not a very cheerful hobby you've got, Mr. Briggs. He attacks only field mice and small animals, Mr. Clancy. Would that falcon be capable of attacking a human being? I knew you'd come to that, Mr. Keene. They want to blame my niece Helen's death on one of my birds. Well, it's ridiculous. Oh, those falcons are as harmless as two pigeons. <coughs> There's Preservus. What was that? Sounded like Amy the maid. Get him out of here. Keep him away. Amy. Amy, control yourself. Why are you carrying on? It's one of your falcons. He flew in through the window and almost blinded Stop me. Stop acting like a child. It's probably Sir Richard. Uh, I'll, I'll oh, find him. Calm yourself, Amy. You're not in any danger. My name is Keene. Mr. Keene, the great investigator? Oh, I was hoping Mr. Carter would call you in, sir. The most terrible things have been going on in this house. So I've heard. It's those birds. Well, you'd think they were human the way Mr. Briggs talks to them. One of them killed Miss Helen, I know it. And I'll be next. Oh, no, take it easy, Amy. No one's going to do any killing while we're around. Tell me something about Miss Helen Carter. Was she on good terms with her Uncle Jonathan? As far as I know, sir. I guess he's a harmless one himself, though he... Acts like a loon sometimes. But it's those vicious birds, those falcons. I can't stand them. I don't think Helen Carter was murdered by a bird, Amy. No? In fact, I'm sure of it. But, Mr. Keene, I've heard of eagles and hawks attacking people sometimes and even killing them. That's true. A bird the size of a hawk might possibly attack a man or a woman if it was provoked. But it certainly wouldn't bother to cut a telephone wire before doing it. Well, I... I never thought of that, boss. Sir Richard! Sir Richard, come back here! Come back! Don't! Don't shoot me! Faith, and now what's going on in this place? There's a shotgun blast, Mike. Sounds as if it came from outside the house. Come along with me. Mr. Keene, look. Who are you? I was just going to ask you the same question. Kim Bradhurst, my name. Where's Jonathan? I've got a little present for him. You've killed him. You've killed Sir Richard. I'll say I have. I was glad to blast his ugly head off. You'll find him out there in the woods, Jonathan. If that other bird of yours starts going after my chicken, she'll get the same dose. You murderous! Steady, Mr. Briggs. Take him inside the house, Mike. Come along. He, he killed my falcon. I swear it counts. I swear it counts if it's the last thing that I do. What did you say your name was, mister? I didn't say, but it happens to be Keene. Oh, famous investigator, huh? Well, I suppose you've come to find out how Helen Carter died. Well, I loved her as much as anyone. If you find the killer, I'll be happy to help you take care of him. I won't need any help on that score, Mr. Brighthurst. But I assure you I intend to find him or her, no matter how dangerous the task it may be. Helen Carter was murdered by a human being, not a bird. Although it appears her killer had talons. And I'm going to see that those talons are clipped for good. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the Yellow Talon murder case. Meanwhile, beware of unpleasing breath that breeds between teeth. Get Colinos toothpaste with amazing dental floss action for a clean mouth and a pleasing breath. 
Most unpleasing breath breeds between the teeth, in the deep recesses where food particles can collect and decay. These are the places that must be reached to have a really clean mouth, a pleasant breath. Your dentist knows this to be true. Now, Kalinos toothpaste gives you dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to penetrate hard-to-reach dental areas. Helps dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath and tooth decay. What's more, Kalinos has high polishing action. Brightens dingy teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Kalinos is gentle, safe for even children's teeth and tender gums. Enjoy its cool, clean, minty flavor. Most refreshing toothpaste ever. Test Kalinos in your own way. Keeps your teeth bright, your breath right. Kalinos toothpaste is dentist approved, dentist recommended. Get the Kalinos with dental floss action today. Save 31 cents on the giant economy size. <laughs> Now, back to Mr. Keene and the yellow Talon murder case. The strange and terrifying murder of pretty Helen Carter brings Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, to the Carter home 50 miles from New York, the scene of the crime. The victim appeared to have been attacked by some gigantic bird. And the only clue discovered so far is a large, broken yellow Talon, as sharp as a knife. Now it's shortly after midnight. And in the room Mr. Keene and Mike have been given, Mike is suddenly awakened from his sleep by the sound of someone moving about. Quietly, Mike reaches under his pillow for his revolver and then raises himself on one elbow and prepares for action. Don't move. Whoever you are, mister, don't move or I'll shoot. It's me, Mike. Everything's all right. Mr. Keene, what are you doing, sir? I heard someone moving about the house. Don't put the lights on, Mike. Just slip into your robe and slippers and follow me. I'll be right with you, boss. Just one second. Ready, Mike? Yes, sir. Then follow me. This way, down the hall. This house seems to be as quiet as a tomb. I'm sure there's a prowler about, though. Boss, look. There's a light moving towards us at the end of the hall. Someone with a candle in his hand. Stand back against the wall until he reaches us. He hasn't seen us yet. Boss, it's... Yes, Mike. It's Philip Carter's uncle, Jonathan Briggs. Looking for something, Mr. Briggs? What are you doing, Mr. Keene? Spying on me? I was just wondering what you were up to at this hour. You and your partner here think I'm crazy, don't you? You think there's something wrong with my mind. On the contrary... I believe you're a lot more aware of what's going on than you appear. You're looking for a murderer, aren't you? You're looking for the man who killed my niece, Helen. Well, maybe you'll have two murderers on your hands. What do you mean by that? Kim Bradhurst killed my pet falcon. He killed one of my birds for no reason at all. Because he wanted to see how miserable he could make me. Well, when I get my hands on Bradhurst, he'll wish he'd never been born. Mr. Briggs, maybe you ought to go back to your room. Don't touch me! I can take care of myself. I'm not as old and decrepit as my nephew seems to think. He may be supporting Let me, but... Let go of me! Let go! Help! Help me, someone! Mr. Keene! He's coming from that room, Mike. That's the maid's room, Amy's. Well, the door's locked, boss. Break it down, Mike. Wait! I'll let you in! What's going on oh, here? It's Eloise, my nephew's fiancée. What's the trouble, Eloise? And this maid, Amy, is a thief. She's got a room full of things that belong to Helen Carter. I heard her prowling around the house, and I followed her here to her room. I caught her with my purse. I left it downstairs on the table by mistake before I went to bed. Is that true, Amy? Well, I guess there's no point in saying no. You have the evidence. What's the trouble, Mr. King? What's going on here? I'm afraid your housemaid Amy is in a very difficult situation, Philip. She's evidently a thief. Look, Philip. The closet door is open. There's a pair of shoes that belong to your sister, Helen. She even stole her clothes. Miss Eloise, what's happened to your hand? Well, you've got her cut on the palm, young lady. Amy scratched me when I tried to take my bag away from her. She fought like a wildcat. Well, what'd you expect me to do? Smile at you when you grabbed me? Anyway, I, I, I didn't take much. It isn't as bad as all that. I'm afraid it's a lot more serious than you imagine, Amy. You not only face a charge of larceny, but also one of murder in the first degree. Murder? Oh, no. No, I, 
I didn't kill Helen Carter. I swear I didn't, Mr. Keene. You can defend yourself in court, Amy. I'm asking Mr. Keene to see to it that you're placed under arrest. Well, at least give me a chance to call someone. An attorney? No, no, not a lawyer. Uh, Mr. Bradhurst. Kim Bradhurst, our neighbor. What's he got to do with this? Well, never mind. He owes me a little something, at least protection. Let me call him. That's all I ask. All right, Amy. Go ahead. I'll keep her company, boss. Just to see that she behaves herself. Right, Mike. So it was Amy Parrish who murdered my niece, eh? Perhaps. But this case isn't quite finished, Mr. Briggs. We may be due for another surprise. In any event, we'll hear what Mr. Bradhurst has to say. And that must be Kim Bradhurst now. Philip. Yes, Mr. Keene. I suggest you take your uncle to his room. There may be trouble between the two. Very well, Mr. Keene. Come on, Uncle Jonathan. All right. I'll go. Can't stand looking at him anyway. Here's Kim Bradhurst, Mr. Keene. Still carrying his shotgun, I notice. Maybe I like to carry it around, Mr. Clancy. Well, now, Amy, what is it you want to say to Mr. Bradhurst? Mr. Keene's accusing me of murder, Mr. Bradhurst. They all say I killed Miss Helen. That's ridiculous. We found Amy the maid with stolen goods a little while ago. And she admitted taking most of it from the murdered girl, Helen Carter. I don't know anything about stolen goods, Mr. Keene. But I'll stake my reputation on the fact that Amy didn't murder Helen. What makes you so sure, Mr. Bradhurst? Because she was Helen's confidant, as well as her personal maid. And she's a friend of mine. Amy's done me many a favor, making things easier for me when Helen was alive. I'll return those favors by backing her to the limit. In what way did Amy help you, Mr. Brighthurst? I can tell you that, Mr. Keene. Well, Miss Eloise, do you know? Amy used to inform Kim Bradhurst when Helen's brother Philip was out of the house so he could try to see her on the sly. It used to frighten me. I knew that Philip disliked Kim, and I, I thought one day it would lead to trouble. Do you know why he carries that gun around with him all the time? I don't mind admitting it. Your sweetheart Philip's a big man, Eloise. And stronger than I am. I made up my mind to take care of him the next time he put a hand on me. Mike, ask Philip Carter to bring his uncle Jonathan back to the room. And ask Jonathan to bring his pet falcon along. Okay, boss. No, I'm afraid of that bird. I don't want to see it. Don't worry, Amy. I got rid of one of those falcons with a shotgun. I can do the same for the second. I advise you to be careful, Mr. Brighthouse, and keep that gun lowered. But why bring the falcon in, Mr. Keene? You'll see in just a moment, Miss Eloise. Please, just call me Eloise. I feel as though we've known each other for a long time, Mr. Keene. That's odd. I feel the same way, Eloise. Just step inside, Mr. Briggs. What do you want with me? My bird, Mr. Keene. I just wanted to make a test, Mr. Briggs. Look at that bird. It's horrible. Do you also think the falcon is horrible, Eloise? No. I think it's a beautiful bird, Mr. Keene. Yes, Eloise always liked my falcons. She understands them. Perhaps even more than you imagine, Mr. Briggs. What? Just what are you getting at, Mr. Keene? I'm afraid I have some shocking news for you, Philip. In my opinion, your fiance Eloise Gray, is a murderess. She I... murdered your sister Helen. What's that you say? Eloise? Mr. Keene, are you joking? A few minutes ago, Eloise claimed that she followed Amy to her room. And caught her with her purse. Well, Amy admitted it, didn't she? Yes, she admitted it, Eloise. And she did steal your purse. But you didn't follow her or see her take it. You were waiting for Amy in her room. And may I ask how you know? The door was locked. If you had followed a thief to her room, you certainly wouldn't have locked the door yourself. It would have put you in a dangerous position. No, it was Amy who locked her own door when she entered, thinking she was alone. And you were waiting there to kill her, the way you killed Helen Carter. That's a lie, Mr. Keene. No, it's not a lie, Eloise. And I have further proof. You said Amy scratched your hand when you struggled with her for the purse. I noticed that Amy bites her fingernails. They aren't long enough to scratch anyone. Then, Mr. Keene, how did Eloise get that cut on her palm? She inflicted it on herself by accident with it. She was wearing sharp talons, yellow talons. Use on Amy as she did on your sister. Look, look at her, Mr. Keene. Yes, yes, I killed her. She hated me. 
She wanted to break off my engagement to Philip. But that isn't true, Eloise. She loved you. Loved me? Wasn't she trying to call the police? Yes, and you cut the phone wire. In some way, Helen found out what you wear, Eloise, and she tried to protect herself. <gasps> Boss, look what she's putting on her hands. The talons, the sharp claws. She wears them like gloves. You hate me too, kid. And you'll get what she got now. Mr. King, look out. Saints preserve us, but I was almost too paralyzed to move. Did you see how she acted, boss? Why, well, she waved her arms like, like she was some kind of a hawk and, and went for your throat, Mr. Keene. Yes, Mike. Mr. Bradhurst, I'm sorry you used your gun. Mike would have been able to subdue her. I couldn't help it, Mr. Keene. When I saw the insane look in her face, watched her reach for your neck with her talons, well, I tried to protect you instinctively. Well, I suppose she's better off. She was undoubtedly insane. Mr. Keene, I... I can't believe it. How could anyone change so? I'm sorry, Philip. But in my opinion, your fiancée had a split personality. She changed from a human being to what you've just seen, a homicidal maniac. How long had you known her? Only a, a few months. And your sister, Helen, actually was very fond of her, Philip? Yes, Mr. Keene. Well, Eloise had to have some excuse for murder in her poor, distorted mind. So as she imagined, Helen was trying to ruin her life. Amy would have been her second victim. It went for a stroke of luck. However, we can consider the case to be closed. We've solved the mystery of the Yellow Talon murder. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the Yellow Talon murder case. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel, Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Dialogue by Lawrence Klee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the case of murder with a thousand witnesses. Ever suffer heartburn from acid indigestion? New Barsadol Mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling anywhere, anytime. Barsadol Mints give longer-lasting relief than baking soda, help prevent immediate return of the trouble, soothe irritated stomach lining, let you sleep when indigestion strikes at night. Carry new Barsadol Mints for fast relief. And always have Barsadol powder in your home. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Colonos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.